everybody, it's Crystal Ann Compton. I hope you are having a beautiful day wherever you are on the planet today. In this video, I'm gonna be answering another one of my viewers' questions. A couple of weeks ago, I made a video saying, ask me anything, and I got a lot of questions, and I definitely wanna to get to them. This question came from somebody named Carol of Texas. Hi, Carol of Texas. I am in Texas myself, so lovely to meet you. Carol says, please, I would really like to know if we are indeed reincarnated. My mom passed away in 2004, and I don't feel like she's around me at all which is interesting. My father passed in 1995 and I don't feel him around me hardly ever. And when I do feel my father, I don't feel like it's his active spiritual essence. I feel like it is a transmission from his higher mind and or his oversoul. And I know that sounds a little crazy, but help, let me explain this. Um, I feel like my father has reincarnated. That's the information slash energy that I've received around this. But just because my father is in a new life, incarnated as a new being, and by the way, we tend to incarnate into the same families or into the same soul groups at least. We incarnate into these different lives with a group of souls time after time after time, and we just kind of switch up roles with one another in order to teach each other's it teach each other lessons. So it's really common when you have an ancestor die, like a grandfather die, that that grandfather is then back in the family as a great granddaughter many generations later, but they kind of stay in the same family. Anyway, so my father passed in 1995, and I think he pretty quickly reincarnated back into our soul group, but I'm still able to receive transmissions or have interactions with my father, but I'm not talking to his incarnated essence, like the being that he is now. I'm talking to his oversoul or his higher, his, it's more like his higher mind. And this is where it gets kind of cosmologically complex. Here in this 3D reality, we have our mind. And we're using our mind right now, we're thinking, we have thoughts, narratives, but above, our mind and our perception here in this reality, there is a higher mind. And that higher mind, though, still governs Crystal and Compton. However, it is more proximate to the higher self and therefore has a higher vantage point. And this higher mind, the one that's most proximate to us in this reality, stay with me, this higher mind is still attached though or fixed to the identity of Crystal Ann Compton in this incarnation, but because of its proximity to higher self, it is able to remain kind of neutral and just observe what Crystal Ann Compton is doing. And we can often pop out of this lower mind, if you will, the 3D mind into this observer position, which is a higher mind, in order to kind of check out our life, look at our decisions and see what we are doing and then kind of make some better decisions and choices for ourselves and then continue on. So that's the observer, which is a form of the higher mind. Let me take this off the screen for you and something that we all have access to. And then above that higher mind, there is another higher mind. So above the observer, there's another higher mind still fixed to Crystal Ann Compton and this incarnation. And so without going into all of the cosmology of it, let me just say that there are many, many higher minds. And at some point, these higher minds are no longer fixed to Crystal Ann Compton in, to, in this incarnation, but rather the stream of Crystal Ann Comptons that are existing simultaneously in various timelines, dimensions, etc. We have a higher mind that governs all of that. And then we have higher minds above that, that govern other aspects of my soul essence that are existing, not necessarily as Crystal Ann Comptons or the Crystal Ann Compton line, of which we can include past lives and future lives that are connected to Crystal Ann Compton. These higher minds are governing other aspects of my soul that are existing, perhaps in this reality and other realities, but not with the identifier of Crystal Ann Compton. I know I'm losing some of you, but just stay with me because it's interesting. And then above those higher minds that are governing these other aspects of ourselves, we have, of course, way at the top, the highest mind, which is the higher self. Now, by virtue of being connected to all of these higher minds and to the higher self, we actually have access to these. And these aspects of ourselves can communicate with us 
at any time from their vantage point, which is cool because some of them are in different dimensions and universes and we can actually get information from these higher selves, higher minds that are existing. But those aspects can also express or give information on our behalf. And here's where I'm tying it all in for you, Carol of Texas. When I communicate with my father, who I believe has reincarnated, I am communicating with one of these higher minds, like kind of like a satellite, if you will. I don't know if that's the right metaphor, but a higher mind that has access to my father's timelines, his past lives, his present life, his future lives. And that higher mind is intelligent. And I can actually rendezvous and communicate with that higher mind and draw down information. And that higher mind can communicate to me as the essence of my father, Dennis, speaking from that individuality, if you will. And I can recognize that because I recognize that soul essence. Now, if I were communicating to my father, Dennis's higher, higher, higher mind above this dimension, above this universe outside of all universes, maybe his higher self, it would not feel the same. In fact, it wouldn't identify as Dennis. It would be a nameless higher self being such as we all are. But we can communicate with the spirits of our departed loved ones, even though they've reincarnated. My experience has been that when they have reincarnated, the communication that we're getting from this higher mind satellite type being is less. They're not as evidential. They're not as a, they're not around as much. They can be accessed. We can give and receive information, but they are engaged in what's happening with Dennis and the life that he's living now. If Dennis had not reincarnated, I would probably be able to interact with him a lot more dynamically and have different types of rendezvous and different types of interactions. But because he has reincarnated, I'm not talking to Dennis in this life, well, unless he's reincarnated as my child, which I have suspected, <laughs> but I'm talking to his higher mind. So let me bring this back to you, Carol of Texas, hoping I haven't lost you. The reason you're not hearing your mother as much is probably, I would guess, it's probably because she has reincarnated, but that doesn't mean you can't speak to receive information from her soul's essence and her higher mind. You still can do that. Now, the way they transmit, the way they give us information, the way they interact with us, this higher mind complex of your mother is different. It's not like if they were around us ambiently and flipping on lights or giving us messages very evidentially, it's different. It's just a different way of communicating and understand how they give their messages. You have to align to that to be able to receive that. It's kind of like turning the dial on a radio in order to pick up that frequency. So if you haven't been hearing from your mom, it's probable she's reincarnated. Not necessarily. Sometimes people pass and they go into the next dimension, wherever they are, and they're just having a good time. And of course, there's no time there. There's no space there. And so it may seem like years and years for us, but just a blink of an eye for them. And when they get around to it, they might start coming back and interacting with us. But they're just having a good time. They're experiencing what's going on in that dimension. And alternatively, some people pass after having a really, really hard life and they need a period of <clears throat> rest. I actually call this a kind of climatization. They need to have repairs done to their light body, to their energy, their essence, before they can actually hop out of that rest mode and into the fifth dimension or wherever they want to go because of the trauma that they sustained while they were in an earthly incarnation. And that is time for us. On our end, we perceive their resting and they're repairing their climatization as time passing on our end, but then they leave the rest and then they're able to communicate with us. So it could be a variety of things, but ultimately, do I think reincarnation is real? I do. I think, I think there's enough evidence. Um, there's enough information and there's also enough witnessing resonance in a lot of us that we know, yeah, that just makes sense. We come back into this space. Now, do I think it's compulsory? I do not. Compulsory means that we have to do it. It's mandated that we die and we got to come back. I don't think that <clears throat> it is compulsory. I, for example, don't have any plans to come back to the earth plane anytime soon. I would be hard pressed to come back in this century <laughs> or the next one, like give me a good 500 years, let a sister rest. 
Um, I don't, I kind of don't want to come back at all, but I don't really know from this vantage point, my mind here, what I'm going to be thinking once I pass through to another dimension. Now, let me close by saying there is a concept called the reincarnation trap, which is predicated on this idea that going into the light when we die is actually a soul recycling trap where we are compelled to do a life review and then a higher authority, whoever that is, compels us to reincarnate. This is supposedly administered and organized by beings called the Lords of Karma. And I actually have some thoughts about that. Uh, some of that feels and resonates with me like fear porn, like how can I scare you? But some of it doesn't. But I'm going to make a separate video on that. So look for a video in the future on the Lords of Karma or the Reincarnation Soul Trap, and we'll get a little more deep still into the subject of reincarnation. I know that was weird, wild, and wacky. I hope it made sense. I do want to just say, though, don't worry about it, because you, wherever your mother is, she's okay. And you can always talk to her. You can always open the portal of your heart and create that connection. And we do that by just thinking on our departed loved ones, our moms, our dads, our friends, our siblings, our family members who have passed. We just think about them until we can actually feel that activating our heart. And when we do that, it opens up a connection, kind of like a phone line. And this channel travels to wherever they are, whether they are a higher mind, whether they are in the fifth dimension having fun, it opens a channel and it reaches them. And they're actually able to use that channel, that phone line, if you will, to travel all the way back into our experience and give us a hug or give us love. But we, they always feel it. They always know it. And we are never alone. All right, Carol of Texas, and all right, rest of YouTube. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day or night, and I'll see you in our next video. Bye, guys. Join me this year at the 2019 Bliss Retreat in beautiful Loveland, Colorado. The Bliss Retreat is a four-night, five-day, blissed-out extravaganza where there will be sacred ceremonies, spiritual workshops, and nightly services with me, Crystal Ann Compton. Go to theblissretreat.org to learn more. I hope to see you there.